Hey guys, me Andrew again, your favorite Canadian YouTuber, eh? And once again, it's time for yet another episode of Skylanders Imaginators Death Stars! Now, I've made a few new characters since the last episode, so let's get right into it. Starting with Shovel Knight. I think this should be self-explanatory enough. I know the design isn't perfect, but I think this is about as close as I can get it. At least I got most of the right aspects down, right? Unfortunately, the horns couldn't go upwards, that, but this was the closest one I could find. Uh, the spiral horns do turn upright instead of backwards, but they're too short. Now, the real big issue here when creating this guy is that uh, none of the weapons in either the Knight class, Sentinel class, or Smasher class were shovels. The closest I could find was a frying pan. Keep in mind, this is unscripted, so... Sorry, I didn't really plan this out. Now, there are a variety of weapons here, but uh, none of them really resemble a shovel. Uh, the frying pan came closest, in my opinion. Maybe the hammer, I don't know. Well, I'll just stick with this for now. So anyway, uh, as for the parts, I used the Spartan head. Keep in mind, I, I built this on the Xbox version before I moved it onto the Switch version, because I unlocked more stuff there than here. I was originally going to give him a different head. I think it was called the, the Round Table Night Head or something. No eyes. And the Scaled Horns, once again. Uh, once again, I was thinking about giving him the, uh... Oh, they're not unlocked in this game. Never mind. Right. The Shining Armor Chest. Heroic Arms. Heroic Legs. I guess they seem the most fitting for a knight of this stature. No tail. Unless you think I should give him a tail. And I, uh... And I gave him some shoulder gear, the the guard pauldrons. Pauldrons, sorry. Why did I... Alright. And as you know, Shovel Knight is known for being a bit of a short feller, so, uh, I, uh, so I... The height and lower body are both pretty small, uh... But I tried to balance it out as much as I could. And these are the color patterns here. And I gave no aura, unless you think you should have one. <sighs> probably think we should probably call him Pan Knight, but that'd be stupid. Prepare to face justice. That's about as close as I can get to his uh, one of his famous in-game phrases. Prepare to taste justice. Shovel justice. You remember that, right? This is about as close as I can get to that. And I figured the Regal Boys would be the most fitting. Man, this looks weird. Hmm. Now, uh, I don't know if you guys still use the Creator Wrap, but, uh, you know, I'm just gonna save your ears the trouble. No. Oh, I forgot to mention his abilities. Why didn't I plan this out? Master Pulverizer, I figured this would be more fitting than the smashy one. You might be thinking the knight class would be more appropriate since he's a knight and not a hammer smasher or whatever. Now, this is why I chose the earth class because in this one he burrows underground. Master Berserker, uh, I was thinking of choosing this at first, but I'll, yeah, I went with this instead. You know what, let's just see what he can do here. I forgot, when I go off the stage, the enemies all just disappear. I hate when that happens. Tell me, does this move look familiar? Hmm. And as for the digging ability...
Oh yeah, that's an upgrade I gave that. When he's done burrowing, he gets a little crystal defense thing. So, uh, what do you guys think? Hmm. Hmm. Do you guys like my interpretation of Shovel Knight and Skylanders Imaginators? Well, I think I talked long enough about that. Let's move on to the next. You know, this next one I struggled with a bit. Uh, I attempted to create an inkling from Splatoon in Skylanders, but uh, sadly I couldn't find most of the right parts. But then I found something that gave me a different idea. You know what? Instead, I'll make an Octoling. Take a look. I didn't give him any voice or anything. So, uh... I did find some parts that seem uh, somewhat similar to the um, Octolings from the Octo Expansion. Uh, now the real thing that inspired me to make an Octoling was the hair. Oh, crap. Hmm. Hold on a sec. The headgear. The Octohawk. This instantly reminded me of like the tentacle Mohawk of the uh, standard male Octoling design. Obviously it's different because the one in the game is just one tentacle that just goes down forward and there's a whole bunch of tentacles going back. But, uh, you get the picture here. You know, I think this would actually be a really cool design in the actual Splatoon game. They really need to add more hairstyles for the Octolings. This would definitely be a good one. So, so as for the other parts, uh, head is the doe deer. This is about as close as I can get to an inkling head. Hmm. Default eyes, rounded ears. If it was an inkling, it would have, like, more pointy ears for sure. Hmm. Cat suit. I know this may seem weird, like you wouldn't think it was this part, because uh, the colors I added, which I'll show later. Bare arms, obviously. And the legs, the bikini and boots. Now, uh, I know the male Octoling in Octo Expansion wears different pants, uh, and this one is more reminiscent of the uh, female Octoling. I decided to do a mix of both, do a mix of the two designs, since like this is about as close as I can get. And there's no tail. They don't have tails, as far as I know. It would just be weird if there was a tentacle tail coming out. Uh, maybe that's for the best that there isn't. As for the weapon, I figured these would be the most fitting. The Tidepool pistols. Because, you know, there's a Skylander named Tidepool and she has, like, squids as guns. I figured this would be the most fitting. Let's see, no shoulder guards, no arm guards, no leg guards. And the uh, backpack is the Deep Sea Backpack. I tried to find something that looks at least close to the backpack that the Octoling wears in the Octo Expansion. This is about as close as I can get. Mm. Size proportions. Mm. Color scheme. And, oh, I forgot the aura. Mm. Mm. Bubbles, because why not? As for the uh, abilities, Master Marksman, when I chose the water element, uh, this was about as close as I can get to the ink-like abilities, the Master Bubble Bounce. You'll see why in a sec. Master Blast Zone, this is about as close as I can get to one of the uh, sub-weapons in the game, uh, you'll see in a sec. Personality? I, I was originally going to give him, like, a like a warbled alien voice at first, but, you know, just don't give him a voice at all. Just be better that way. This is about as close as I can get to the in-game tunes that you hear in the game. You get the picture here. Well, uh, let's test this guy out, shall we? Eh, it's kind of like the baller in the game, wouldn't you say? I know the, the main Billy isn't very splat-like. Like, remember that Skylander splat? Uh, 
she definitely has very Splatoon-ish vibes, to say the least. Uh, so what do you guys think of my attempt at an Octoling? Good? Well, that was definitely one of my more somewhat successful attempts. This next one here was more of an experiment. Like, you guys know in Crash Bandicoot 4 when the new when the new uh, Tana was revealed? Uh, you know, the first thing I thought was, you know what? I'm going to recreate her in Skylanders Imaginators. I'm not sure if I'm the only one who thought that, but I highly doubt many others thought that. So, at first I thought I could pull this off good, but then I realized, uh, let's just say, uh, even though this game has a very large variety of different things to customize, uh, definitely a lot better than Super Smash Bros. Meat Fighter creator system for sure. Though it's, though there, you can't create everything in this game, and let's just say this wasn't my most successful attempt. You know, you know what, I'm just going to show you. Brace yourself. Yeah. This, as sad as it is, this is about as close as I could get it. Unfortunately, the face doesn't split into two colors in the middle, so I had to choose either one color or the other. It's complicated. Obviously, I figured the Crash Fists would be the most fitting. Oh, crap. Why do I keep doing that? So, Doe Deer Head... That, apparently that's the closest I can get. I tried others, but they I tried the cat head, but that looked even worse. The cat ears. Ballerina torso. Princess arms. Adventurer's legs. This is about as close as I can get to her 80s style skin tight jeans. Uh, and I don't think Crash has a tail, so I, and I know she doesn't. Crash fists, they seem only uh, fitting. Hmm. Size proportions. Now, once again, I went with the Octohawk for this. I know it may seem weird that you're using tentacles as the hair, but I I really struggled to find the right hair for her. I was originally going to give her something like a, a mohawk, something like this. Or maybe I was going to give her the, uh, what's it called? The, uh, like the, like the Spartan mo Mohawk or something. Can't seem to find it here. I don't think I locked it in the Switch yet, but you get the point, right? So, sadly, this is what I got here. Or do you guys think the Mohawk looks better? Yeah, sad as it is, this is about as close as I can get here. This is the color scheme. This, uh, I also chose a life element because Crash is a life element. And uh, fun fact, this actually used to be the Shrek before I turned it into Tana. And I tried to uh, see if I can match any of her in-game abilities shown in the demo. Uh, can't say they were successful though. Too cool for the future. Mm. Huh? Well, let's just play as her. Maybe I should have uh, played her in the crash level, which I do have. I think that's enough of that. So, what do you guys think of my attempt at creating the new Tana from Crash Bandicoot 4? I know it's not great, but this is about as close as I can get here. Hey, somebody had to do it. I might as well. I think that's enough on that. So, let's move on to the final creation. This one here is uh, definitely a more successful attempt than the last one I showed, to say the least. So, have any of you heard of the new uh, retro throwback FPS game, Ion Fury? I've actually did a video about it uh, related to it just recently, and uh, 
Well, for those of you who know her, say hello to Shelly Bombshell Harrison. What do you think of this? I would say this is definitely one of my more successful attempts at uh, trying to recreate a character in game. I figured the bobbed and beautiful head would be the most fitting for her. Regular eyes. I decided not to give her any ears. Female armor torso. I guess it w this one seemed to match her Kevlar armor the most out of everything else. Beetle arms. Uh, I know it may seem weird, but these are the closest I can get to... Now, certain certain color aspects were a little tricky to replicate, because I didn't know if certain parts of her were gray or like a, or dark turquoise or something. So it, it was rather difficult. No tail. No. Yeah. Out of all the quick shot weapons in the game, these ones are my favorite. I mean, those triple bear ha handguns with the skull and bones on them. Those look awesome, wouldn't you say? And I think they're pretty fitting for Shelly as well. As for the gear, I decided to add a little shoulder guards. Uh, first, I wasn't going to, and I decided, uh, you know, there's, these ones are very small and subtle. Uh, I think they'll blend in fine enough. No arm guards. And uh, to match the uh, the armor um, in the legs, uh, armor padding or something, uh, I decided to go with these, because at least they go halfway up the leg and have that little, like, sort of rounded piece in the middle. Uh, this is basically as close as I can get to replicating it. Uh, size proportions. As you can see, the height and lower body are both at maximum, because uh, she does have a very, like, a very tall structure, I'll say. At least from what was shown. Didn't want to make her head too big or too small. And these are the color schemes. No aura, unless you think she should have one. As for abilities, Master Marksman, the, mighty, the Master of Mighty Minds. I figure the mines would be the most fitting for her because uh, her signature bowling bombs or the or the cluster pucks. Uh, I figured these would resemble them the most. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then you probably haven't played on Fury. And the mastered gunslinging it might as well. Well, these other abilities are good too. Fun fact: This used to be the Doom Slayer before I turned it into Shelly. If you haven't seen the episode where I made the Doom Slayer in Skylanders, uh, I think it's in the same playlist as this. I figured the heroine voice would be the most fitting for Shelly, without question. Then, hmm, strange, I know. Yeah, I think I've shown enough. Let's get right into it. Oh, if you're wondering why she has that like a uh, ripped up cape there, it was an attempt to make her hair look longer. Yep, that's definitely Shelly style, all right. So, what do you guys think? Do you like my latest creations? So, which of the four in this episode is your favorite? Would it be um, Shelly, Shovel Knight, Octoling, or Tana? I doubt it's Tana, but I'll leave, leave that for up, to you, up for you to decide. Yeah. You can tell she's definitely having fun here. So I think that's about it, everyone. I've made plenty of other creations in the past. Like, uh, I've created Shantae, Risky Boost, the River City Girls, the Doom Slayer, uh, Ninja Baseball Batman, and Azura from Azura's Wrath. And plenty of others years before that. Like, this is sort of like a, a comeback to an old series I made long ago. Uh, back when, like, uh, back when, like, Skylanders was uh, still around. Uh, I think it was, like, 2016, 2017, back when I created characters like, uh, like Ruby and, uh, stuff. Well, you know what, they're all in the same playlist, uh, you can check them out there. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time.